that I genuinely stood up, yelped, and then walked out of the room. What's up, guys? Ben Ababit here, and welcome back to this episode of Road Back to High Stakes. We're going to take a little look at the February results, followed by some of my thoughts on the week, and then jump into some hands. So let's take a look at the last week of February, as well as the results for the entire month. So as you can see, in the last week, we made just under 20k and ran about 5k above EV, a nice pounce back from last week. In big blinds, we made about 13 buy-ins and ran a couple of buy-ins above. And here are the results for our overall February. So I just want to say that the reason this graph is winning, because many of you probably assumed it was going to be losing, is because in the very first episode, I posted the minus 100k graph from 2023 on GG. And then the second episode was the second week of February. So I didn't actually ever get an opportunity to post the first week of January because I wanted the hands to be fresh for that current week. So as you can see, I had a pretty good start in February. I won about 30k to start off. And then I obviously won 7k, then I lost 30k, and then I made a little bit back. So this is where we've ended the month, up about 18, 19k and EV around plus 33, 34k. And lastly, the month in big blinds, we won about 13 or 14 buy-ins and our EV was at around plus 24 buy-ins. So my overall thoughts on February were that I played pretty well overall. As I mentioned a couple of times in other videos, I think I left a bit of money on the table. And as I'm sure some of the comments agree that some of my hands were not played as optimally as they could be. That said, mistakes do happen. So I'm going to have a bit of compassion about that. I definitely remained really, really consistent. I took most of January off because I was away. So February was like my first month getting back into the grind. And I really, really remained consistent with turning up every day really putting in my study hours and making sure that when I'm off tables, I'm really getting the rest that I need. So overall, I'm really, really pleased with how the month went, regardless of results. And of course, it was quite nice to book a win as well. So onto the hands. We have a very, very interesting three bet pot versus a reg, an extremely questionable bluff and an even more questionable call down in a single raise pot. And then we have a massive 10K pot at 2K and L versus a complete whopper. So here we have sixes in the small blind and we get open from a reg and we go ahead and three bet. We've seen nine four deuce with the flush draw and going small I think would be a mistake here but going half or two thirds is okay. I elect to go half pot on this board. Villain goes ahead and calls and we see a seven spades on the turn. So when Villain does call the flop they're going to have a whole host of one pair hands. They're going to have some draws like ace three and ace five and then they're going to have some overcards like ace queen and ace jack with a spade. They're also going to have uh, the backdoor flush draw over cards as well as some of the jack 10 of diamonds and clubs as well as a sprinkling probably of the king queen of no backdoor flush draw either. Because we have seen that the flop pretty high frequency and in position now has more of a filtered range than we do, I think on flush completing turns we're going to be playing pretty high frequency check and the sizing we're going to be using is going to be in the region of like 40 to 50% betting sizing. I'm going to be prioritizing my hands with a spade or over cards or over pairs before this one. So I go ahead and check. Villain goes ahead and bets small, and I think with our combo, we're only left with the option of call, don't want to raise, and obviously can't fold. So we see the ten of clubs on the river, and Villain goes ahead and shoves for about 90% pot. So this is a super interesting spot. So in terms of our blockers, we definitely block 6-5 of spades, 8-6 of spades at frequency, king 6 of spades, and then maybe an a 6 of spades, even though it's probably not meant to be calling, but I know some people definitely do. Um, our 6 of diamonds only blocks one bluffing combo, which I do believe villain will find every single time, uh, which is definitely a negative for, for, for our holding. That said, in terms of like our check calling range on the turn that arrived to the river, we're going to have a bunch of over pairs with no spade that were kind of not really incentivized to bet in the turn, at least always. So we're going to be pure check folding, I imagine, jacks through kings with no spade. Obviously, we would have bet most of them with a spade on the turn and we will never fold them on the river. The other negative with having those overpair combos is that they're often going to block the backdoor floats. And the next thing to consider is that we do just unblock that huge portion of the overcard region, which is going to be the king queen, king jack, queen jack of hearts, and then obviously the ace jack with a spade ace queen with a spade which potentially isn't meant to bluff the river but i do think is going to happen at least some of the time and then there's going to be ace king with a spade which probably should never bluff but is definitely going to get bluffed in reality so all things considered i think that our combo actually falls pretty nicely into the bluff catching range uh given all those other hands that we're going to be folding first so i was trying to figure this out all in game and kind of create a bit of a hierarchy of my bluff catchers um and after a very very long tank i do end up calling and this time, fortunately, we do find the very well played a spade jack. 
And here we have Jack Tent offsuit in MP. So there are a couple of other deciding factors that are going on here, which is that the cutoff has posted um, and presumed recreational was 70 big blinds. And then the big blind was a weaker-ish opponent, somewhere between reg and rec. Obviously with ignition, samples are always very small, so you're making a lot of inferences. And the last thing is that the rake is very low, so that is going to be my third justification for making a loose open with Jack 10 offsuit. We go three X because of the post, and I want to increase my opening sizing because of that. We get defended from the big blind and we see King 7-5 with a flush draw. So this is a board that you can either go one third or half pot on. I actually just like going one third on this board. Um, and our combo is going to be mixed for sure. And on this occasion, I do go ahead and bet. We see the nine of clubs on the turn bringing a second flush draw and villain goes ahead and checks. So first things first, sizing scheme. I think from the button, there's going to be a pretty clear mix between two third and over bet here. And I figured that from MP, given that the cutoff was a poster, so I'm kind of effectively cut off. I did think there were going to be some over bets as well. I do believe that out of position, raises 8-6 suited versus the small bet very often on the flop so I think that's somewhat discounted. So all that considered I decide that my sizing scheme is going to be over bet. Now for whether or not we want to bluff our hand. So I think our suits are actually very good to bet the turn with at least some of the time. I would sooner bet these suits than Jack-10 with a diamond and the reason for that is it's quite a nuanced spot because when out of position has the Jack of Diamonds or the Ten of Diamonds in their hand here it always has a either combo draw or a nut flush draw neither of which are going to fold. So actually by me not having a diamond I allow out of position to have those hands that they're never going to fold but also for them to have more one pair type holdings that are going to fold like hands like king deuce or king three of hearts for example all things considered i go ahead and use my combo some of the time to bluff and this is one of those times so villain calls and we see the nine of hearts on the river so first things first is we need to consider our sizing scheme i imagine we definitely need to have a medium sizing like a two-thirds pot basically for our ace king and aces and then we need to choose a bigger sizing for our boats, our bluffs, and our nines. So that's going to either be overbet, whether or not that wants to be a small overbet or all in. I think all in makes a lot of sense here as the big sizing. So my sizing scheme is going to be two thirds all in. Now, what do we want to do with our combo? Well, the Jack of Clubs on the surface looks like it's a bad card because we want OOP to have Jack X of Clubs that they're going to fold the river. That said, there really aren't that many combos of that. There's only King Jack of Clubs, which is indifferent on the river anyway, maybe even pure folding. Um, and then there's going to be discounted combo draws because a lot of those are going to check shove the turn. Uh, but also like a Jack 8 of Clubs doesn't really get to call the flop all that much. I guess it's going to mix, but it's definitely not going to be arriving at full frequency. So the Jack of Clubs is actually deceptively an okay card. And I did figure that this combo with the club and the heart was at least going to be okay as a bet. Uh, as for sizing, I decide to go with the all-in sizing. And Villain goes into the tank and ends up making a pretty sick hero call with Jack Seven of Diamonds. And here we have the biggest pot of the year versus a huge recreational. Uh, so basically the reason this recreational has $16,000 at a 10-20 table is because I'm almost certain there was a bot or two at this table. They continuously tried to keep bluffing this recreational in like kind of underdefended nodes and was just calling down and basically winning every single time with fourth or fifth pair. So we get an open from under the gun for minimum and then a very quick three bet from the recreational. I cannot tell you how excited I was at this point given how deep we were and how loose this recreational was playing. And I go ahead and four bet. You will be happy to see to a bigger sizing this time to $500 uh, on the button. Recreational had the call any button on it seems because that money was in there before the flop even came out. Obviously we've just got the dream flop of all time, flop comes King Jack 8 with two diamonds and I start out with a half pot C bet. The Recreational thinks about it for about two or three seconds and check raises me to 1600. What more is there to say this is like genuinely the dreamest spot of all time. Definitely don't want to three bet the flop, even though I do think that versus some recreationals that is going to be the play. Uh, when I have the board so locked down like this and we have an extremely bluffy opponent, I definitely want to be keeping the bluffs in. All that said, I go ahead and call and pray for a good turn. Clearly my prayers have been answered because we turn a second nut bow on the eight of club and springing a second flush draw. Villain then goes ahead and bets very quickly again for half pot. We only have 3,000 total, um, but I definitely don't want to just let this recreational fold a hand like, I don't know, 
ace five of hearts or queen six of hearts or something like that. Believe me when I say those hands were in the range. Uh, so the only river I don't want to see here is a king, but even on a king, I'm pretty happy with the spot regardless. So I do just go ahead and tank call the turn. We see an innocuous five of spades with SPR at nine, and we see a very quick shove from the recreational. Obviously, I'm already dancing at this point. I get out the snap call, and this time we have run into the pocket kings for the nut boat versus the recreational. And let me tell you now, I'm not one of those people who gets up out of their chair, who even says anything while playing. I'm pretty stoked when I play, but I genuinely stood up yelped and then walked out of the room and then proceeded to quit my session five minutes later. So before I shoot off, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you watching and commenting on the videos. The channel's popping off way more than we anticipated it would, so thank you so much for that. Hopefully this winning graph that I posted won't make everything tank, but rest assured, next week we do have another losing one for you guys. So until then, take care and I'll see you at the tables.